Researchers at the Jenner Institute at Oxford University have found a simple and cheap way of making vaccines stable at tropical temperatures, which could revolutionise vaccination efforts in low-income countries. Well, joining me now to discuss this further is Dr Matt Cottingham from the Jenner Institute. Dr Cottingham, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Now, my understanding is uh, that vaccines need to be refrigerated, but you've discovered a new method um, to keep them more stable. If you can tell me a bit more about that. That's right. So currently, virtually all vaccines have to be refrigerated immediately after manufacture for shipping and delivery. Um, but we've developed a way of formulating live vaccines so that they don't have to be kept in the fridge. And we've managed to make them stable for up to six months at 45 degrees centigrade. And, and how are you able to do this? What, t talk us through the method. The method is actually based on a phenomenon from nature called anhydrobiosis, which means life without water. Um, and there are certain plants and some animals which can actually resist complete desiccation, uh, such as a resurrection plant. So you find it completely dry, it looks dead, but when you add water it can rehydrate itself. And chemically the basis for that is mainly a sugar called treolose, which is similar to sucrose, which is ordinary sugar that you put in your coffee. Um, and so what we've done is to formulate the vaccine with these two sugars, and then to develop a way of drying it onto a membrane so that it becomes vitrified in the sugar which forms a glass. And potentially, what sort of vaccines are we talking about that this could be applied to? Well, we've used it for two model vaccines. Um, and the two viruses we've looked at are called adenovirus and MVA, which is a variant of the smallpox vaccine. And we're excited about those because they are possibly the best platforms for making new vaccines against malaria and HIV particularly, where there are currently no vaccines. Um, but because those, both of the vaccines we worked on are live viruses, so they're living organisms, and that makes them very hard to thermostabilise. So we hope that this technology will actually be applicable to any vaccine. Because vaccines are so fragile, what are the potential risk factors to this kind of method? Um, well, essentially the only difference between this and a conventional vaccine will be the presence of the sugars which are needed to stabilise it. And those are sucrose, which is ordinary table sugar, and treolose, which is very similar. And those are already used in lots of medicinal products, so there is no extra risk at all associated with the thermostable version of the vaccine. So if you are able to ship vaccines at sort of normal temperatures, what will this mean for sort of global health? Well, let's take an example from malaria. So at the moment, about a million babies die every year of malaria in Africa, of which 800,000, the vast majority, are in rural areas with essentially no access to healthcare. So those are exactly the sort of people who we would hope would benefit from this type of technology because it means that the vaccine can reach them through existing trade routes, people carrying it or on bicycles or on, in normal vehicles um, which don't need to be refrigerated. Um, and although the coverage of vaccination is very good in some parts of Africa, approaching the global average of about 80% of babies, um, we hope this will enable new vaccines, particularly for malaria and HIV, to penetrate into more rural areas. Great. Well, um, I'll leave it there for now, but thank you very much for joining You're us. You're very welcome.